Welcome to Candid Conversation, our advanced Christian series. We've been going over the spiritual gifts. Two times ago we talked about why God gave the spiritual gifts, mainly of healing the sick and casting out devils. There in uh, Matthew, Jesus, the 12 disciples, the 70 that were sent out, all given these spiritual gifts. Matthew through Acts chapter 7, you see those in operation. Last time we talked about the gift of tongues and how in the diminishing away of Israel in Acts 9 through 28, we saw how the gift of tongues changed. When tongues was given in Acts chapter 2, it was speaking and then the hearer would hear it in his language that he understood. So you may have 50 different languages understood by the people in the audience and one thing is spoken and it's heard in those 50 different languages and that way the lost sheep of the house of Israel hear the here's the wonderful works of God here's the gospel of the kingdom and then that way they can believe it then we saw when we get to Acts chapter 9 this is what we talked about last time with the dispensational change and the start of the dispensation of grace the tongue talking then was changed it wasn't where you hear it and your no and your known language but it was a language that no one spoke or understood some type of heavenly language and there was an interpreter needed to interpret into the, the common language of the people there and then the gift of prophecy was needed to say what was scripture and what wasn't the prophets were very important because that's how we got paul's epistles Paul wrote at least three letters to the Corinthians, if not four, but we only have two of those. He probably wrote a letter to the Laodiceans, according to the book of Colossians, but we don't have that one. He wrote other letters than what we have in Scripture, but it was the prophets who were gifted by God to say, Thus saith the Lord. This is Scripture, this is part of the Bible, and this other part isn't. You know, this other letter that Paul wrote is not part of Bible, but the other, uh, the one letter that Paul wrote is. So um, that was the gift of prophecy. Now, today I want to talk about the gifts of miracles and healings because that's a big emphasis in churches, especially Pentecostal churches. Even with um, normal, fundamental churchianity, they, they believe in physical divine healings. They may not lay hands on the sick and pray over them for them, anoint them with oil and pray for them to recover like James 5 says. They may not do that, but they'll at least pray. You hear somebody that has cancer. Well, I'll pray for them that God would heal them. And then when they go through the radiation treatments and things and they don't have it anymore, praise the Lord, God healed them of cancer. Well, you know, God would then it would have been the same result if it was an unbeliever, but anyway. So you've got these miracles and healings Jesus did. You got the 12 disciples. They went around healing. The 70 that were sent in Luke chapter 9, they went out healing. And then when you get to Paul in Acts chapter 9, uh, again, because you've got the diminishing away of Israel taking place, where God has Paul going to the to the Jew first and also to the Greek and since 1 Corinthians 1 says that the Jews require a sign then God continues the spiritual gifts even though uh, in, in Acts 9 even though the dispensation has changed into the mystery dispensation and so healings is one of those so right around I think it's either Acts 18 or Acts 19 you'll see that uh, Paul is healing people everywhere just like you look at Jesus in Matthew 4 he healed everybody that came to him you get uh, to Peter in the book of Acts he's healing everybody that came to him and same thing with Paul when you're around Acts 18 or 19 Paul is healing everyone in fact they didn't even have to come to him you could have somebody who was sick and you'd bring the handkerchief from that sick person to Paul and uh, he would touch that and, and then they would be healed from that. So uh, the gifts of miracles, healings continue with Paul. Now, when you get to the end of the Acts 28, 
then there are the spiritual gifts cease. 1 Corinthians 13 talks about when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. The in part is the spiritual gifts because it says, um, charity never faileth. This is 1 Corinthians 13, 8 says, charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. So the in part is prophecies, tongues, knowledge. Those are the things mentioned there, the spiritual gifts. And the reason, because uh, the reason that they cease, the tongues cease, knowledge shall vanish away, prophecies they shall fail. The reason that the spiritual gifts stop is because that which is perfect is come, and that which is perfect is God's completed word. In Colossians chapter 1, Paul says that he writes, uh, he's been given the, the mystery, Paul's been given the mystery by the Lord Jesus Christ to fulfill or to complete the word of God. So when Paul penned his last epistle, which I'm guessing is 2 Timothy, when that was penned, then God's word was completed. All Hebrews through Revelation had already been completed by that time. And so when he completes that, uh, 2 Timothy or whatever his last book was, well then God's word is completed. And so the gifts, there were two reasons for the spiritual gifts. And by the time you get to the end of the book of Acts, those two reasons have passed off the scene. One is what we talked about last time, is that, uh, that salvation has come to the Gentiles with the new dispensation to provoke Israel to jealousy. And they were, they, they stumbled at the cross, Israel stumbled at the cross, they fell at the stoning of Stephen, and then they diminished away for the rest of the book of Acts. In Acts 9 through 28, in Acts 13, you'll see Paul, he says to the Jews, you've rejected the word, you've judged yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. He says that again in Acts 18. The Jews have rejected, we turn to the Gentiles. Then he says it for a final time in Acts 28. Uh, Jews have rejected the gospel of grace, we turn to the Gentiles. Three strikes, you're out. And so the book of Acts ends there. The book of Acts does not end with Paul dying. It's not a recording of Peter's ministry followed by Paul's ministry. The book of Acts is written to Israel, giving them salvation, the gospel of the kingdom, for them in Acts 1 through 7. And then Acts 9 through 28 is the gospel of grace, the new dispensation, the mystery gospel, going to, going to the Jews uh, in that diminishing away phase. And once you get to Acts 28, the, for the third time, Paul says he's turning to the Gentiles because the Jews have rejected the mystery gospel. Therefore, the book of the Acts ends, even though Paul continues living, continues spreading the gospel of grace. But he doesn't continue with the Jews. And so since it's concerned with the Jews, the book of Acts is concerned with the Jews, then the book of Acts ends at that time. So one of the reasons why God gave the spiritual gifts to the body of Christ at first was because the Jews require a sign and then God had Paul go to the Jew first with the mystery gospel and so they diminished away in Acts 9 through 28. Once they had rejected that final rejection by the Jews of the gospel of grace and Paul there in Acts 28, well then God says they've diminished away. Now a Jew can still be saved but there is no special calling for Paul to go and give the mystery gospel to the Jew first. He his ministry from then on out is going to be to Gentiles only. Well, granted, a Jew could come. I mean, he's not going to say, oh, I'm not going to give you the gospel because you're a Jew. You know, Jews could still be saved, and Jews are still today saved. But, for the most part, it's going to be Gentiles who are saved, and there's no provoking ministry anymore by Paul going to the Jew to provoke them to jealousy. They've diminished away. And so, since the Jews require a sign, and the ministry isn't, Paul isn't going to the Jew anymore, well then the spiritual gifts aren't needed from that respect. And then the second point, which is what I touched on a little bit when we first started this lesson, is that the 
the mystery was a new dispensation, new information. There is new doctrine associated with the mystery that you don't find in other dispensations. For example, the cross. The way you are saved today is trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for your sin. That message does not appear until given to the Apostle Paul. When Peter preached in Acts chapter 2, he preached the cross, but he preached it as bad news. He said, Ye men of Israel, ye by wicked hands have crucified and slain Jesus. And this saying, Jesus, whom ye have crucified, God has raised from the dead, set him at the right hand of, his fa uh, of the Father in heavenly places, and is now both Lord and Christ. And so then they asked the question, what shall we do? And the answer in Acts 2.38 is, Repent and be baptized for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. There was no mention of trusting in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for your sin. That gospel to be saved is not does not appear until given to Paul in Acts 9, probably between verses 22 and 23. So that was something new, and Jesus told Paul, that's the new gospel, and Jesus spent three years with Paul, giving him that gospel and mystery doctrine, and he spent some time later on, brought him up into the third heaven, and he saw things up there. And so, uh, God gradually revealed things to Paul. He gradually wrote them all down. I know for me, I've been trying to read a commentary on the New Testament, and I've been working on it for many years, and uh, you know, I get it as time goes. I get, you know, a book here or there, but uh, I haven't completed it yet. And because it's, you know, it takes time. So I think even though God gave Paul the mystery doctrine, um, he didn't have time to record it all right away. You know, he's got to get the gospel out to the whole world. So how are you going to... You know, you've got to travel and uh, and do these things and meet with people and answer their questions. So how is he going to get the time to write it all down? And it's interesting that the way he writes it all down is by these epistles answering questions and correcting doctrinal issues with churches. And by doing so over the course of the rest of his life, then he is able to write down all the mystery doctrine. And so once it's all written down, then remember the Jew requires a sign and the Greek seeks after wisdom. And that also tells you why the spiritual gifts change too. The sign of the tongues was showing the Jew that the gospel that they preached, that they already understood, was um, would save them because it, they must have been of God since they spoke it in their native language. When you get to the Gentiles, the gift of tongues changes to one of wisdom, giving sound doctrine for this dispensation through the, through the gift of tongues, through the gift of interpretation of tongues, and then through prophecy. And so that was imparting wisdom to the Greeks. So you can see that when the gift of tongues continues in uh, the new dispensation, the twofold purpose, one was to give a sign to Israel, two was to give wisdom to the Greeks, the Gentiles, saved members of the body of Christ. So once Israel diminishes away, you don't need the gift of tongues anymore after Acts 28, and once Paul pins the mystery doctrine down, uh, then you don't need the... Um, you don't need the gift of tongues for the Greeks to get wisdom because it's all written down for them. You've got the complete revelation of the mystery to fulfill the word of God when those books are completed. And so then you don't need the, the gift of tongues anymore. So the sign gifts, all the spiritual gifts, they do continue in the new dispensation. But the twofold purpose is to get Jews saved as a sign and to give the Greeks wisdom. But since... Israel has diminished away by the end of the book of Acts, then that purpose is gone for the Jew. And once uh, God's word is completed with Paul, well then you don't need the gift of uh, tongues and interpretations and uh, faith and knowledge and prophecy anymore because it's all written down for you. So now, um, the, and so then now the reason for the Greeks to have the spiritual gifts has gone off the scene too. So, the spiritual gifts cease at the end of the book of Acts. Now, um, I wanted to talk a little bit, with the remaining time we have, to talk about uh, miracles and healings, because 
that's a big deal for uh, churchianity. As I mentioned, the Pentecostal seek after that. They'll anoint you with oil, pray, you know, put their put their hands on you, anoint you with oil, and pray for God to physically heal you right then and there. The uh, Baptist and the other denominations of churchianity, they believe in physical healings as well. They're not going to anoint you and think that you're going to be healed that way. They think you're healed through the doctors healing you. So when you had cancer and now you go through radiation and now you don't have it anymore, well then God has healed you. But really the, the gift of the, the physical healings, again since the spiritual gifts have passed off the scene, uh, the physical healings aren't done anymore because you know what the, the physical healings were just a sign anyway. You look in the Old Testament, I think a lot of churchianity, because they don't really pay attention when they read their Bible, uh, read it there, they don't understand. They think that that God had been doing physical miracles throughout the last 6,000 years. And that's simply not true. There were designated times when there were physical healings. When the Jews needed a sign in order to be saved, God in His wisdom intervened supernaturally and gave physical healings and miracles and uh, other times he didn't do it. So you look at uh, Moses day, the 10 plagues brought upon Egypt, uh, those were God physically intervening there. You've got um, Elijah and Elisha during that time. Uh, there were a couple of kids that were raised from the dead, resurrected. There were uh, healings given then. So you got physical miracles and Elijah and Elisha's day and then when Jesus comes you've got that too and then continuing on with the disciples and then by the end of Acts it's done so um, even if you don't rightly divide the word of truth and recognize the difference between the uh, the gospel of the kingdom that Jesus taught and the 12 disciples and the gospel of grace that Paul taught you can still see that miracles and healings are only done at specific times in history for specific purposes and, and I think the reason is because it can get it can puff people up and that's another thing I want to talk about is that the way that most of churchianity looks at healings is that the way it works is that you've got some kind of sickness let's say the cancer so you got cancer then what they'll do is they will pray for you and you pray and if the person who has the cancer has enough faith to believe that God will heal them then God's going to heal them but if not well they didn't have enough faith if you had the faith of the grain of the mustard seed you can move mountains but your cancer is still there, so you must not have had that faith. Or you must have had some unconfessed sin on your life. The focus of healings today is on the person who needs the healing. So I've got some problem. I'm going to make sure that I've got enough faith that I believe God will heal me. Have faith without doubting because anyone who doubts is like a wave of the sea that's tossed. Um, you got to be stable. You got to be steadfast in your faith. Believing God will heal you of whatever ailment you have. And then God will heal you. But if He doesn't heal you, then you didn't have enough faith. Or you had sin on your life that you didn't confess. You need to turn your life over to God. And all of this is a bunch of spiritual malarkey that's found nowhere in Scripture. When you've got physical healings in Scripture, they're done because of the person that has the gift of healing. I mentioned Jesus. He went about and he healed everybody. Peter, same thing. Paul, same thing. You don't see any of them saying, well, you don't have enough faith, therefore I'm not healing you. It had nothing to do with the faith of the person with the disease. The gift of healings was a sign gift to the Jews to show them that God is with them and that because God healed them of their physical ailment, then God can heal you spiritually too. So then the gospel that was preached then would be believed. And that's the whole purpose. God is not concerned about physical healing, physical health for you, because 
even if you have good health, you're still going to die at some point. Lazarus, raised from the dead. He may have lived another 30, 40 years. I don't know. I'm guessing he was a young man. He probably lived at least another 30, 40 years. But then he died. But since he believed the gospel of the kingdom, he has eternal life with God on earth. If he didn't believe, he would spend eternity in hell. So the ultimate healing that God is concerned about is your spiritual healing, not your physical healing. Because once you recognize your sin and trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for your sin, God does the greatest miracle of all, healing you spiritually speaking, and uh, giving you eternal life in heaven, paying for your sins, taking you out of hell. And that's something that's never taken away from you. So that's what God is concerned about, the ultimate eternal spiritual healing, not a temporary physical healing. And so you notice that in the Bible, with the exception of Hezekiah, and, the, and I have time to go into that as to why that happened the way it did, but everybody else who is healed in your Bible is healed by someone who is a healer, who has the gift of healing. When the guy who had a lunatic devil in Matthew 17, and the child had that lunatic devil, and, the, and he was not cast out, it had nothing to do with the lack of faith of the child who had the lunatic devil. It was the lack of faith of the healer. The, it was on the disciples. They didn't believe God, and that's why. It has to do with healing. Healing is always, except for Hezekiah, that one case, healing your Bible is always a gift that someone has, and then they heal the people, and then they just heal them all. Um, because they've got that gift of the healing on them. Today, stuff is a bunch of malarkey that well you didn't have enough faith you didn't have the faith that moved mountains you didn't have enough uh, you were you didn't keep short accounts with God you didn't confess your sins um, that all that is is excuses because God's not doing the physical healings today also if God were doing the physical healings today why is it that the only ones that are claimed are ones that you can't really verify I knew somebody who had both legs amputated no one in the church prayed for him to have legs grown. Um, what, what about people like that? Arms, they don't have arms, they don't have legs, they have a finger chopped off. Things that are physical ailments that you can see, they've got some physical problem there. And um, why, why don't you ever hear of any of those people healed? Where a leg grows back. You didn't have a leg. I'm not talking about the little trick they do is saying, well, one leg shorter than the other. I'm talking about someone who doesn't have a leg, and all of a sudden they have it. Or someone who's verified blind from birth, like with Jesus, and he heals the man who is blind. You don't hear of anything that's it's obvious where you could tell, is this a supernatural, instantaneous physical healing or not? Any case like that, no one's ever healed. Because God's not doing it today. So... Uh, the physical healings and the miracles were gifts that the people, believers, had to be a sign to the Jew and to show wisdom to the Greek. And because both of those aren't needed anymore due to the diminishing away of the Jew at the end of the book of Acts and due to um, God's word being completed, then there are no healings like that. So Paul left Trophimus and Miletum sick. And with Timothy, he said, use a little wine for your oft infirmities. Thanks for watching.